Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. So here, let me show you. So I'll give you, I'll give you a clear example. So the, Benz, the best bounce areas, right? The best bounce areas are always, here, let me, let me show you. Let me show you this. It's much easier on an uptrend than a downtrend. It gets a little, little harder to see. So the highest probability when a stock is breaking out, and you can see everybody remember this 1120 pivot? It was only a couple of days ago, right? This 1120 pivot on Tesla, really, really strong 1120 pivot. So once you have a stock breaking out on a macro level, you know the only stock to, to bounce are stocks that are breaking out macro, okay? You never, you never under any circumstances, uh, bounce a stock that got rejected off a daily chart. Because again, the, the, the simplistic question from my end is, would you ever would you ever buy a double top? Would you ever buy the dip of a double top? The obvious answer is no. Even even the biggest uh, novice traders in the world will never uh, buy a dip on a stock that got rejected in the same area. It just doesn't make doesn't make any sense. So the first course of action is you always want to um, you always want to buy dips on stocks that broke out. So if you notice here, right? If you notice here, uh, Tesla broke out, started putting in a big move. But do you guys notice where Tesla kept on bouncing, right? Tesla kept on bouncing. Everybody see this orange line? Right guys, everybody see this orange line? So it kept on bouncing off this orange line, 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 right? So forth and so on. That orange line represents, if you switch to the daily view, that orange line represents the five day moving average, okay? That is the short term sentiment on the macro chart and that is always the short-term sentiment on the intraday chart. So anytime the stock retraces back to that quote unquote five day rising support, there's a high probability that emotional seller is gonna meet technical buyers, okay? So the best way, if you, especially if you're a new trader, the best way to put a bounce, right? So let's pretend the bounce spot here is 11.36, right? So if you're an experienced trader, what you can do is you could put, you know, you could put some, you could put some shares out there at 11.36, 11.37, and if it hits perfectly and they, and they and they re, and they hold that level, the stock should bounce. Okay, the stock should bounce off that level. The problem is, a lot of times, remember, this is a moving average. Okay, this is not a concrete wall, so this is a moving average. The stock can stop at 11.36. The stock can stop at 11.38. The stock can stop at 11.34, it's an average. So there's two ways to play it. The first way to play it is if you're an experienced trader and you say, hey, look, the bounce spot here is 11.36, let me put some stock out there at 11.36. And if you get filled, the stock starts working, everything's great. You caught the bounce spot, everything is well. The problem with that is a lot of times, like we said, it's not a concrete wall, a lot of times what happens, they'll go through, right? They'll go through. And the craziest part about it is, yeah, they can go through for maybe another dollar, maybe another $2, but these stocks can go through sometimes, the really aggressive names. Tesla could go through $5, Tesla could go through $10. So the safest way to play these bounces are remounts. And which basically means is when the stock goes through that number, right? Let's just call it 1136. When the stock goes through that number, let's pretend it puts in a new low of 11.32, let's pretend for argument's sake. So when the stock puts in a new low of 11.32, that is your absolute max pain, right? So when the stock gets back above 11.36, that's called the remount, right? That's called the remount, that's called uh, the bounce, right? That's called the remount. So you already know that if the stock doesn't go, right? If the stock doesn't go after reclaiming that level, you already know that the fictional low that we just I just made up, that 1132 is going to be your max pain. So then your job is to turn around and say, let me appropriate how many shares I could play with this bounce, already knowing my max pain is gonna be the $4, right? The fictional $4 uh, 
uh, that I already put in. So if the stock doesn't bounce and I get long on the remount, my worst case scenario is the $4 that I've already put in low on this candle. And that's how you, that's how you adjust your risk. That's how you adjust your, your tier size to maximize the biggest move possible in case, you know, we've seen some bounces on Tesla, $20, $30 right but at least you already know okay at least you already know that the, you already know you're low right you already know you're low of the candle you already know the max pain of your candle you already know that the stock needs to reclaim the, the shortest uh sentiment into rising 60 minute support so you're not shocked so you're not putting on uh you're not putting on shares that you you can't handle emotionally and again there's there's no difference between holding one share 10 shares or 100,000 shares Okay, if, the, if it's all subjective to who's trading it. So if a fund is trading 100,000 shares of Tesla, it's not a big deal. If you're trading 100,000 shares of Tesla, that's a big deal, right? It's, it's apples and, and, and hand grenades. So everybody, subje you know, based on risk, already knows that it doesn't make a difference if you're long 100 shares of Tesla or 100,000 shares of Tesla, that 1136 remount is either going to explode bounce back up or it's going to lose the blow of that candle, which which in that point, if you're along 100 or 100,000, that becomes your max pain, right? That becomes your max pain. You already know what your full risk is. You already know that the stock has failed that balance and the sellers wouldn't give up that rising, uh, rising uh, support, okay? And you know, because risk tells you, you have to be out of the stock technically instead of holding on like a deer in headlights emotionally and turning a paper cut, right? And again, when you're playing bounces, you're not playing full size, you're playing quarter, third size, right? You're not playing. So even if you lose $2 on a quarter size, who cares? Think about that. If you're trading 100 share lots, right? If that's your quarter size, 100 share lots, and you lose and you lose two points on, on, on quarter size, who cares? Right? Who cares? Because you know when the stock bounces and it goes 5, 7, 12, 15, 18, 20 points, that's a, it's a pretty good move versus what your overall exposure is. So the key is to appropriate yourself tier size that you're completely emotionally move the risk because you already know what your downside is. You already know how important that level is for a remount and you already know where your next potential bounce spot should be to make some sales on the next supply. So. Um, the key is to these bound spot, appropriate proper risk. Understand that your risk is always the bottom of that candle that made its move into rising support. And that's when you start, you know, you start getting comfortable with these balances. And I'll be honest with you, I, I think most of the, I, I think most of the webinar is very, very, uh, very, very comfortable uh, buying. I don't want to use the word falling knives, but I think if you're an inexperienced trader, wouldn't you call that a falling knife? But for us, it's a high probability levels where emotional sellers will meet us, technical buyers. So uh, it's very, very important to kind of uh, know your risk, right? Know your risk, uh, know your downside risk. And the most important part is appropriate proper, uh, proper um, uh, size back on the way up.